This animation explains requirements for maneuvering clearances at doors in the ADA and ABA standards. Door maneuvering clearances provide space so people with disabilities, including those who use wheelchairs, can approach and open doors and proceed through doorways. Door maneuvering clearances are sized according to the approach direction and the swing of the doors. For most approaches, including a forward approach as shown here, space is required beyond the latch side of doors. This provides room for optimum positioning at door hardware. A latch side clearance of at least 18 inches is required on the pull side for forward approaches. The clearance must be at least 60 inches deep. Projections into door clearances obstruct maneuvering. Fixed objects, such as shelves, cannot protrude into the required clearance anywhere along the full height. Mobility aids vary greatly in their design and size. Many people use power chairs, scooters, and other alternatives to standard manual wheelchairs. Providing additional clearance beyond the minimum specified will accommodate a broader range of devices, including larger models, by allowing more positioning and maneuvering space. Maneuvering clearances also serve people who use crutches, walkers, canes, and other mobility aids. As with wheelchair access, specified clearances provide room for effective positioning at doors. The maneuvering clearance is required to be flush with the wall. An offset of up to 8 inches from the face of the door is permitted. Where an offset would exceed 8 inches, such as at deeply recessed doors, the maneuvering clearance must be located 8 inches maximum from the plane of the door and be sized for a forward approach. Less space is needed on the push side of doors than on the pull side. Maneuvering space on the push side for a forward approach must be at least 48 inches deep. A minimum 12 inch clearance is required on the latch side of doors that have both a closer and a latch. This additional clearance allows easier maneuvering through doors against the force of closers. If a door does not have both a closer and a latch, no additional clearance beyond the opening is required on the latch side. Negotiating thresholds while proceeding through doorways can be a challenge, especially where doors have closers. Thresholds are limited to a height of one half inch and their edges must be properly beveled. Thresholds no higher than a quarter inch can have straight edges. Mobility aids, including wheelchair footrests, are sometimes used to help push or prop open doors. For this reason, the bottom surface of doors on the push side must be smoothed to a height of at least 10 inches. Applied kick plates can be used to help protect door surfaces. The standards also specify maneuvering clearances for side approaches. Hinge side approaches on the pull side require more space than most other approaches due to the maneuvering required. All maneuvering clearances are illustrated in the standards. Maneuvering clearances are dimensioned based on the approach direction, the swing of the door, and, in some cases, the presence of a closer or latch. At doors in series, a separation of at least 48 inches between the swing of doors provides space to get through one door before encountering the next. This required separation also applies where doors swing away from or towards each other. Maneuvering clearances are required at each accessible door, but they can overlap. At entry alcoves, it is beneficial, though not required, to provide wheelchair space beyond the swing of doors. As with doors in series, this provides enough space to clear one door before proceeding to the next. Exterior doors can be difficult to open due to the weight of doors, wind loading, air pressure, and other factors. While the force to open interior doors cannot exceed 5 pounds, a maximum opening force is not specified for exterior doors. Automating entrance doors is very helpful 
although it is not required by the standards. If doors are not automated, closers should be adjusted to the minimum necessary for positive latch. Controls for automated doors must comply with specifications for operable parts, including clear floor space. This space must be located outside the swing of doors. Controls should be located so that users can conveniently proceed through activated doors. If space at the control is incorrectly located within the door swing, users must hurry out of the way to avoid getting hit by the door. Locating the control away from the door on an adjacent wall, as shown here, or on a post is beneficial because it provides clear floor space beyond the door swing and allows a convenient reach to the control and continuous forward travel through the doorway. Further guidance on accessible doors and other requirements in the ADA and ABA standards is available from the U.S. Access Board. This animation was developed by the U.S. Access Board in cooperation with the federal agencies that issue the ADA and ABA standards.